connecting live video. All right, I'm going to start. All right, I think we're live now. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, replay viewers, for watching, and thanks for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together uh, for about an hour here and I typically work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, so thank you guys again. We have a little different setup tonight. If you see, uh, we are testing it for the first time. I'm gonna see if I can get your comments up here. So give me a moment. And there we are. So, all right. Thank you guys again. And uh, uh, I'm excited to see you. Oh, I'm flipped. Oh, yes. So if you guys are here normally, I probably look completely backwards. This is how I actually look. <laughs> uh, before the, I was using a phone and it was flipping me. So this is me. <laughs> All right, tonight, tonight, you guys, we are uh, on week two of the month, which means we are back on the Splendid Sampler 2. We are working on the stitching pause block. So that is this guy here. Uh, I'll flip you around in a sec and we can look at him. But I also got another huge batch of koalas. So I wanted to share those with you as well. Uh, especially you can see if yours got here or not yet. Uh, I shared what I had so far. Oh, I think we are like six away from 100, if you can believe that, which is crazy, crazy town. I'm so excited. Uh, be sure to check the link below for the koala fundraiser if you would like to stitch a koala. Uh, I am trying to get all the ones now that we're gonna do in the auction quilt. Uh, however, if I do get extras after we do the quilt, I think we'll do something else with it, uh, something fun for sure. They will not be wasted, so feel free to keep sending them my way. I love getting this happy mail. <laughs> All right, you guys, I am going to uh, flip you around and we will look at the koalas and uh, we need to pick colors, uh, floss colors for this, and we're going to start stitching as well. So thank you guys again. All right, so here we are. Okay, so Splendid Sampler 2 again. Uh, all right, hello everyone popping in. Oh, okay, Lenore, thanks for letting me know. So uh, um, we are uh, working on all this. So if the sound isn't matching or something yet, we will be continuing to work on this. This is our first night of trying something new here. So we will keep at it. But all right, um, here is, and I have one more camera for you guys. Boop, there we go. So here is uh, where we left off on this. We are gonna stitch all of the lines and stuff. And I have all of my, my fabrics or, or my um, floss ready to go. So we will uh, play with that. We will pick some colors tonight. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. Um, we will have to, we'll keep working on this, you guys. Again, this is the first night we're doing doing this. All right, so for the time being, let's shush this out of the way. I really, really wanna show you guys these koalas. So uh, maybe we should uh, do these close up too. What do you think? All right, uh, I'm gonna go to the close up again and uh, <laughs> look at these. So uh, I think uh, my husband thought I was probably crazy today because I uh, was just kind of squealing every time I opened uh, these today. So I want to page through them just so you can see if yours got here or not. They are so fun. Oh, Gail, you got yours in the uh, mail today. All right, I'm going to just go through all these so you guys can see. Oh, <laughs> they are so cute, though. Oh, and they're all just different and sweet. Uh, I do have a lot of these, so bear with me, but I just think they're all just so fun to look at. 
and just all the different colors, different fabrics. Sue, I think so too. It's going to be just the most adorable quilt. You know, it's just so funny. One little change from someone's and uh, from another one, and it just completely looks different. <laughs> Look at these guys. Oh my god. I I'm seriously was like squealing the whole time today. They're so sweet. But yeah, we did get a really oop, I missed one. We got a really big batch of them of them today again. I guess that was what happens if you're not picking up the mail over over the weekend. Aw. So I noticed a lot of you guys uh, stitched with two threads at the same time, two different color threads. Oh, here's another one. And I've actually never done that before. Uh, that would be a fun thing uh, to, to try uh, one of these days. Cute. Aren't they sweet? We're getting there. Oh, it's just so fun to see them all though, isn't it? Oh, this is just gonna be the cutest dang quilt ever. I really do think it's gonna be just so sweet. All right, almost done. Nilda, you got yours in here, yay! So you saw yours, perfect. Oh, Patty, you're done with the block. Um, awesome. Oh, Lucy, you saw yours, good. Yeah, I know, it's it's hard for me to just email everyone when they come in, so I, I do wanted to just show you guys all of them so far. Oh my gosh, so this is the one that I posted today. <laughs> Seth, age six. Oh, look at the little eye eyelashes on that guy. I think there's one hiding underneath here. Ugh, oh, so sweet. Just outlines, that's kind of fun. All right, I think there's a few more. That's a pretty sage color. <laughs> look at that one. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, and there we go. That's the last one for the day. <laughs> all right, you guys. Thanks for uh, taking a peek at all of those. Uh, let's start. Um, let's look at some thread tonight now. So uh, we need to pick out thread colors for this, and we're going to get started stitching. Oh, I forgot to share one more thing. I got this cute little um koala bear guy to on like a rainbow loom how cute is that <laughs> so i had to share that too but all right back to the splendid sampler so all right i am going to um look at colors here so i have uh my massive collection these are just variegated threads so i thought it would um I think variegated, oh, actually these aren't variegated, but the colors I thought really went well with our stuff. But I thought some variegated threads might work nice for us here. And I think I have one more, but maybe we'll just stick to here. So uh, I kind of want to just, I'm going to just grab a few quick and we'll just kind of see what we get. So one of the things I need to think about is we're using a lot of pale colors, um, like these yellows, these tans. So I do want to kind of stick with, with a lot of those. Um, so I maybe don't want to go so bright on the green. Uh, maybe stick to more of the tan. So let me just grab a few here. So this is like really close to what we have. Let's see if we go a little more green. Uh, again, these are Weeks Dye Works th uh, thread, the floss, and they have the best named, um, the best named colors. Like this is dried sage. This is butter bean, honeysuckle. Really, really fun. Oh, Nolene, that sounds good. Uh, that should come in time for sure. Okay, so we have several different stems. We could do, we could do maybe the background lines like for these little baby flowers, that, that could maybe be like a matching, um, this kind of yellow. And then we could do maybe this, maybe this butter bean for the big, the big stems that go to like these paws. And uh, then we'll have to choose something else for, for this bow, I think. We could actually pick like a, a pinky color for the bow maybe, like a pink tan. Oh, 
this is kind of like a nice neutral palette. Here, I'm gonna go into the close-up so you guys can, can see again. All right, so this is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, I don't know, let me know what you guys think. So we have this bow uh, that could be kind of this kind of pale pink that's actually awfully tan, but when you look at it with everything else, it looks pink. And then uh, uh, this this yellow color can go with um, like these other yellows for these little stems and back. And then uh, this green is actually these big stems. So if we look at the directions here, uh, these big ones are a chain stitch, which is a fatter stitch. And then these little baby ones are a stem stitch. So a few stem stitches and then uh, the the chain stitch. I think I think let's go with this. So uh, um, I think we're gonna start. Oh, you guys, we still have all these flowers too. What do we do for the flowers? Let's pick something. We could do different colors for the flowers. What if these are the colors? I know we're taking a little bit of time picking um, picking flowers yet. That's what you're thinking. Oh, you need to wrap yours. All right, uh, flowers. Let's see. Let's grab some more colors. I do kind of like this pink. What if we do grape ice? Oh my God, that is the perfect name for this. All right, I think that's a little much though. What about some really neutrals? Okay, now I like, do like that purple in there though. Ooh, I kind of want all these for flowers. Ugh, all these are just too pretty. Maybe we do a pinkier bow. All right, how are you guys feeling about this? This feels really kind of dusty, like those dusty, pretty colors. Oh, they're just really pretty, aren't they? Okay, I think we're gonna go with this. At some point, you just have to decide, right? <laughs> so, all right, um, these are flowers. We have a gray, kind of a mauvey and a purple. This will be the bow. These will be the stems. So I would like to start with the stems that are these little baby stems. Um, I usually like starting with the object that will be the most furthest back. So I think I think uh, those little baby stems would be the furthest back in the bouquet. Then the fat stems would be in front of that. The flowers would be in front of those stems. And then this bow would be kind of in front of it all. So I might do this bow last. But all right, uh, let's, let's get going. I wanna start stitching. So all right, I have Zeb out here. I'm gonna just grab an embroidery needle from him. Okay, and uh, let's start with uh, this yellow color. Oh, how many strands are we using? Let's see, my guess is two strands. Turn the embroidery, I'm just reading the instructions here. The applique and embroidery pages are on orange, I don't see see where it says. I'm going to assume it's two strands of floss just because that's what it's been um, through through this process a little bit. Oh, you like it? Okay. So just so you guys know, um, again, if you are if you're just coming in, this is our first time with this new set it, setup. So I'm uh, just trying to make sure I see your comments. Um, coming on. All right. All right. I can see them again now. Okay. Perfect. Thanks again, everyone for coming in here. All right. Let's uh, separate our strands. So I'm going to grab just one like so and yank that out. So the rest will release like that. Oh, I forgot. These are variegated. Uh, that's going to make all these really different from the get go. Like all our stems are gonna vary just a little. I wanna make sure that I'm putting the strands back together the same way I pulled them out, just so that variegation is the same throughout too. All right, 
right, so let's put those back together. And uh, let's thread this guy. I like squeezing. And there we go. Okay. So I am not going to use a hoop for this. And uh, the reason being is that it's kind of a small, you know, we've already cut it down. It's kind of a small little bit. However, the stitches that were proposed for this, so a chain stitch and the stem stitch, both of those do really, really well without a hoop. So um, it's kind of perfect for this. So I'm gonna still do my little away knot though, I think. So let's, let's just tie a knot here. And I think we're gonna do one of these knots where we're actually trying to stitch on top of it as we go. So uh, I'm gonna start right here and I'm just gonna try and arch over here. I think that kind of makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna actually put in my thread. I'm gonna start at the top here. And I'm going to come up at the starting point. So this is a stem stitch that we'll be doing. Oh, okay, Marie, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, we're gonna work on, a, um, we just got the equipment in the mail like uh, 20 minutes before we came on here. So we will definitely work on the sound. I know um, some video stuff is still goofy, but thank you guys so much for uh, bearing with me for these first little bits too. Oh, everything, everything seems very clear, nice picture. Okay, so good. All right, so yes, yeah, so sound still seems like it's an issue, but you guys can hear me yet. It's just really quiet. It's not like all scratchy or something. All right, so for a stem stitch, I kind of like looking at the arc of what I'm stitching and I have my thread like go in that same direction. So I'm not, I'm not having it go underneath the arc. I'm having it go like above the arc with the arc. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go about almost like two stitches away. So like almost like a quarter inch away. And I'm gonna go in and out in the same stitch and just on the same line right there. Uh, so this is called the sewing method where you go in and out at the same time. So we are going to pull that through And there we go. So it's kind of like a, a little bit like a back stitch, but we are getting out of the way of this thread. So now I'm gonna put this above again. So I'm kind of in that same arc and then down and then up again, right kind of where that last one was. So if that makes sense, we might be a little blurry here yet. And don't pull too hard because um, we, we aren't using a hoop, so I need to make sure to stay flat. In and out. Putting it above again. In, oop. In and out. This is probably this may be the first stitch like if you've been if you've been embroidering for ages i bet this is the first stitch that you that you learned it is um it, it's i think because you don't need a hoop uh it's like just an easy stitch to outline things in so again, it's the stem stitch. Uh, Gretchen, I'm not using a hoop just because uh, I don't really want to wreck the block really, just cause it's, um, you know, I don't have that much edge. I don't want to handle it too much. And uh, I'd have to use like a really small hoop to do it. But mostly I'm not using a hoop because the two stitches that are used in this are two stitches that are easily done without a hoop. 
and it's because we go in and out at the same time. Like this and the chain stitch are kind of made for um, going, bringing the needle down and through in the same motion. And some people do very, very small stitches with this. So, so play around with it and see what you like. I, I went over this flower here and uh, I did that because I'm going to, I'm going to actually end up stitching above it uh, when I'm done. So again, I'm stitching the thing that's furthest back first and the thing that's above it, the flower petals uh, next when I'm done. All right, I am just about done here. One more stitch will do it. Okay. Oops, and I think I'm... There we go. There we go, that's cute. So this, it, uh, it almost matches perfectly with, with um, the colors here. So I think that's looking awfully cute. All right, um, let's, I think I have enough thread to do something else here. All right, so let's try maybe, maybe we can get all the way back up here. So I'm gonna go back this direction and uh, um, we're gonna change it up just a hair. We'll come back to, to this thread, but I, I almost have to start in the same hole where I left and that's difficult to do in stem stitch because if I come up out of this same hole, I'm gonna remove this stitch, right? So here's a, a hack for that. Um, I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to just stitch underneath that last, the last stitch that we did right here. And I'm gonna come through like that. And now I can go back through the same hole. So let's give that a go. All right, and again, you guys, I know it's kind of shifting focus a lot and stuff now too, but we'll, we'll keep working, we'll get it going. Oh, you're on your laptop, Bev, and you can't hear it. Okay, we are going to work on a, a sound a little bit yet for this. So, um, so we will, we will keep working on it. So, <laughs> but thank you guys. Like if there's anything else that's just acting totally weird, let me know. Uh, one thing is I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing your comments all the way. So I will, I'll keep checking on that. Oh yeah, Lucy has a good point too. You don't wanna smush your applique too much by having it in a hoop. All right, so I'm gonna go back this way, but if you can see now, my arc, like the arc of this leaf is kinda going down like this, like a smile instead of a, a frown. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna follow my thread the same way. So now I'm putting my thread underneath cause that's underneath loop like that is the same shape as this underneath, like this, the smiley arc here. So the first time I had it above, this time I'm gonna have it below. But same thing, the thread is out of the way. This just this time it's like a below arc because we have like a below arc stem. And again, in and out on that line. In and out on the line again, coming up in the same spot. Oh no, oh, Robin. Robin said that she had a bad dream that I yelled at her for putting knots on the back of her koala embroidery. If you guys put knots on the back of your koala embroidery, it is perfectly fine. <laughs> just wanna preempt that. All right, so I'm gonna just uh, finish my stitch here. I'm gonna go totally underneath, underneath this leaf and I'm just gonna pop back up on the other side. There we go, that'll do. I think I'm gonna have just enough thread to make it to the end here. All right, again, this is still kind of slightly a downward arc, so I'm staying with um, the downward, downward floss. Oh, this is gonna be so cute with these colors, I think. I think these were good, like these dusty, dusty pale colors. Oh, used to do knots, but but Barry don't. So actually, with two strands, there's 
another kind of interesting way um, to have no knots on the back. Uh, I'll have to, maybe tomorrow we'll play with that a little bit more. All right, how far does this go? It kind of goes, so, you know, I drew this on with water soluble marker a long time ago, but I, I am gonna kind of just use this as a guide yet too. Um, just, just in case, cause you know, like I didn't, I don't think I drew the dots on, um, you know, I got the little French knots in the middle. I don't, I don't think I drew all that. I think we just figured, oh, maybe I did. It's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to just use my paper as a guide. So it looks like this just maybe crosses over a little bit into the border there. All right. And, uh, that's all there is to that. We got two little lines. Oh, you can kind of see, I don't know if you guys can tell, but you can kind of see just a hair of a variegation here. That's kind of cool. So it starts out kind of light. It gets a little darker, a little darker, a little lighter. And that's what's so fun about the variegation of the floss. And, and all that means is that it changes colors. It variates its colors. Um, variates. That's not a word. <laughs> it varies its colors. <laughs> Maybe it's a word. I don't know. It... It has a variety of colors. That's what I'm trying to say, maybe. Uh, going from one to an another. This is that grape ice again. It's more subtle with the, the honeysuckle here. That's what we're using. What are these other ones called? Pebble. That's cute. Ooh, sanguine. Oh, red pear. Oh, that looks just like red pear. Oh, God. Man, whoever, whoever was hired to write these names, I mean, they're doing an ace job. <laughs> All right, anyway, we are done with that. So let's weave in the ends. I am still trying to weave in the end. Um, we do have kind of a little bit of a toe catcher here just because I did a jump. When you do a jump too big, we kind of call it a toe catcher because you can catch you know, a toe in there. But this is all gonna be enclosed in the quilt. So I'm not too worried about that. It's not actually a very big leap. All right, I am gonna weave this in three times still to, to keep it in place. It's, it's that third time that does it the best. That's kind of what locks it in. Okay, let's snip that. And now we can actually snip this other, our first little knot away. That was just kind of storing this little bit of floss for us. Now I can weave in that end as well. We only have to do it this first time because now we have other stitches to weave in. barely enough floss. I do want to get that third time though. Let's see if I can do that. It's crazy how much uh, this blue marker has come through this white. That should all go away though when we take it off with water. It's a water soluble blue marker. Okay, third time we are locked in. Okay, and I don't, oh, I was gonna say, I don't see the rest of my floss, which means it's probably attached to me somewhere, but I found it. Okay, let's keep going uh, with with these stems, but ugh, look how much texture that adds, just some of this embroidery. Ooh, I'm excited for this. Okay, what is next? So this stem, this stem, and this stem are the paw stems, and, um, those are different, so those are a chain stitch, and I, and I thought I'd do those in the green color as well. So let's skip that for now. Um, let's just keep with this stem stitch for now. So there's a really little one right next to it that goes all the way up here. We could do that. Actually, what if we start up here, we could come down here and then go down here and like come up like a V, kind of like how we did this. Let's do that. We might not have, not have enough floss. We could go from here. We only got this far here. Eh, we might only be able to go that far. 
let's give it a go. All right, I'm going to use two strands again. So uh, let's do this. I'm trying to just grab one. So this is a little fuzzier than DMC, which isn't bad or good. It's just something I'm noticing. This weak sty works. All right, there we go. And then we got two strands ready here as well. Ah, now it's attached to me. I think we have one more camera here. Should we try that? Oh, <laughs> no, let's do that. All right, <laughs> so here you see, so let's see from far away yet, you guys. Got my whole little mess going here. All right, <laughs> enough playing, I'm gonna get back. Back here, okay. Grab my, my needle. But yeah, so we'll work on the sound yet. Um, far, far away. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this is good. So this is our kind of our, like I said, uh, if, you're, if you're just coming in, this is our first test of our new system. Actually, you know what? I am going to start down here because I want to weave in the ends to these stitches. I don't want to start a whole new thing. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weave into the backs of these stitches here. But yeah, we are, we are testing out new cameras and new sound equipment and um, all of that stuff tonight. So if it looks a little funny tonight, if it looks a little unfamiliar, that's because it is. We are using different stuff, testing it out. So over this next week, I am hoping that we can um, dig into it a little bit more. And uh, um, like, you, like you guys said, some of your sound is a little quiet. We will work on that right away. So hopefully tomorrow that will be a little bit better. If there's anything else that is super weird, let me know. Uh, this, is, this is when we're figuring it, all, figuring it all out here. All right, so I'm gonna come up here. Let's just do that already. And uh, right there, kind of the same spot as all these other places. Okay, so it's this this kind of bit right here, and then it goes through this paw a little bit, and then up here. It's not this it's not this upper one. That's for the paw. So you can see it kind of has that downward arc again. So I'm gonna have the thread down underneath, and we will follow that line again. So I. I, I know I've talked about this before, I think, in the past, but, like, um, I never got stem stitch. That's the stitch that, that we're doing now. I It just baffled me. I knew it was such a common stitch, and I knew it was, like, the norm. And, like, I was always confused at why I couldn't do that. And, and this is why. Once I figured this out, I was like, oh, I get it now. It's the going in and out at the same time. This sewing method where you go in and out, your thread is out of the way, that is what makes it easy. So this is how I was doing it. First of all, I was in a hoop. I was going um, stabbing method, like how I, I normally like working where I just stab and I pull it all the way through. But then, then this was what was so difficult. I had to get it up, up here again and I had to still kind of move this thread out of the way. And sometimes it was on the wrong side. And sometimes I would stab it in the middle. It was just a bear. I could not understand it. And then, then come up here like that. It was so hard, like avoiding, avoiding that stitch. But the trick was I have to get that thread out of the way. And then I go in and out at the exact same time. And then it's like magic. So that is, that is the key the in and out, um, that really, really, really is the key. If you've been having trouble with, with the stem stitch in particular, that, I mean, at least for me, that, 
that was the aha moment for for stem stitch and made it made it make sense <laughs> so if you've been having trouble check to see oh are you using the stabbing method which again is where you stab you pull all the way out and then you stab back up or are you using the sewing method where you go in and out in the same motion it's the sewing method that works for stem stitch and that's what we're going to do for our chain stitch as well that's what's going to make our chain stitch a bit easier come up there Oh, you've, Debbie, you've had a hard time with this one. I mean, seriously, I, I, it was a mind boggle. I just couldn't understand why I couldn't get it. And I'm telling you, switching to that sewing method, it was kind of just magic. It was like a huge light bulb. Oh, this is so pretty. I love this, how similar that this, red is to our colors here um man really i could have probably done the whole thing with just this one color and it would have been pretty i do i do like that we're going to add some of those other colors but it won't overwhelm the piece i don't think because we did have um we we are using quite neutral colors so i don't want to overwhelm it all right i think that's kind of our last stitch I could jump over here and start down here. I probably have enough thread for here. I'd have to start it up again here. Oh wait, no, this isn't, Never mind. I was thinking I'd have to come back down here, but this is a paw one. This is a different, we're gonna use a different thread for this, um, a different stitch and a different color. So, okay, I'm gonna just weave in the ends and, and be done with this part here. I'll start fresh somewhere else. Good, I'm glad, glad I didn't do that on accident. All right. Oh, that's still not working. Sorry about that, you guys. We don't have everything figured out yet, <laughs> but we will work on that. So I don't think our um, face camera is working anymore. So I won't be able, to be able to see you guys again here, but we'll stick with this close up here. Okay, uh, there we go, there we go, there we go. And uh, let's see what else. I think we have time, oh yeah, for sure. I think we might actually finish this little stem stitch. Uh, we got this guy here. And then this guy and a couple little strands here. All right. And let's get our last little strand. I think we are going to have to cut some more. I don't think. Oh, wait. Again, I'm thinking I have to do this big one, but I only have to do like this small one here. So here and here, maybe we have enough thread. That'd be fab. Okay. Oh, that's Marie. That's a great, that's a great point too. So that was aha moment number two with stem stitch is that whole idea of if it's a downward arc that you're doing, have your thread kind of underneath. If it's an upward arc, like if we would have stitched it this direction, then it would be upward. So we would stitch with the thread on top. So where you're holding it, um, matters and why that is is because each stitch is kind of holding the stitch before it back and uh, if you are holding it on the other side it'll end up um, just not pushing it the right direction really okay I'm going to weave in here I think Let's see, let's plan this a little bit. I think I might just weave in, get up to the top here, and then weave in again, and then restart. I think, I think we're gonna just do that. Or maybe I'll do this little bit here. Ugh, decisions. All right, let's just, let's just start here. Oh, I gotta weave in the end, oh my goodness. 
Let's just do that. One. Grabbing all those threads. back at the base of this. That's locking in those threads again. Ah, that's changing it. Come here, team. All right, hold on a sec, you guys. We are testing the camera again. Oh, <laughs> there. <laughs> I think so. We were there for a sec. You guys could wave at us. Oh, the FaceTime. Why would that be? Oh, it was the it was this. Oh, goofy. All right, just go back to the close. There. All right. All right. <laughs> we you went black. Okay, Debbie. Yep, we know. Um, I know we went black there for a sec. So. Stick with me here, you guys. We are just three times. Yep. Okay. We are literally totally trying to switch cameras. That's why it, it went black. I'm trying to, my uh, face camera uh, went off. So, yep, you're back. Okay, good. So that was totally our fault. Um, it's not your phones or anything like that. We were testing our uh, face camera, but it had turned off. <laughs> So, no more face for tonight. Uh, <laughs> we're getting getting it figured here. But yeah, so we just, you called it winking. Exactly, Gretchen, winking. Oh, Barbara, yeah, give it a try again. Barbara says that she hasn't done her block yet, but it's, it's improved. Her embroidery's imp improved. So now's a good time to, yeah, give it a try again. Yep, so uh, uh, over the next week, uh, I hope you bear with us a little bit. <laughs> you guys can all be our guinea pigs as we, we figure this out a bit. Okay. Oop, that's our last stitch there. Now I'm going to jump up to these. So there's actually a little baby stem this way too. Let's let's do that and then I'll kind of finish this. This is kind of an upward arc and this is still kind of like a flat downward arc. Or I mean like a, a smile versus a frown I suppose. This is the smile one so I'm gonna put this underneath. We'll do two stitches there. Oh, <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, you guys are the best. Thanks for sticking with me here. Got to give it a go at some point. So uh, hopefully we'll figure it out soon. So this is this was an upward arc. OK, so now I'm going to keep this thread on the top because this is kind of an upward arc. Really, if it's straight, I mean, it, this is kind of a straight line. It doesn't matter so much, but it does veer a hair upward, so I am going to keep that upward arc. So you can kind of see I didn't I didn't actually go all the way to that middle where the last stitch ended. I actually went a little higher. You can do that with the stem stitch. That'll make your line a little thinner. You can also get right next to it even more even more than uh, where your last thread ended, and that will make your line thicker just because there's more threads next to each other. So it's just playing around and seeing kind of what, what you like best. My hand is kind of in the way here, isn't it? Ugh, it's looking cute. It is looking awfully sweet. All right, so I'm going to weave in that end, and I think I'm going to just start again here. And hopefully I have enough. I might, 
oh gosh, I might have to get a little bit more for this, but hopefully not. Oh, you know what? I didn't do any of these bits down here too. So we'll definitely need more thread. Uh, I didn't, I didn't think about these down here. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. Weave in, weave in the ends here. So maybe we'll get, get these top bits done tonight and we'll see. Dang, Patty, you made three blocks today. That's, that's impressive. Yep, we're, we're moving right along. I mean, this block is definitely taking some time, but we are, we're getting it. We'll get it all done here. Oh, you think you've done, Barbara's done 50 blocks. I think, what is this? I think this is my, oh gosh, is this 47 or 49? I can't, uh, 47 sounds more like it. All right, I just have a teeny bit of thread here. What can I do with that? I think I can probably get this little bit here with this, this thread. Let's weave in the ends again. That'll probably take the most thread. One. Oh, I think I separated my threads got a little separated here. One slid down. I'm going to bring that back up. There we go. This really is probably not enough thread to do this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to get more thread because I've determined I'm going to need more anyway. Let's just do it. We'll have extra for later then. That's fine. We'll use it again. I mean, look, I must have used this before, so we're using that again. So eventually, eventually I'll use it. I'm not wasting any. It's just easier, easier to not try to deal with a tiny, tiny thread. Oop, got a little tangled there. It really is a lot of fun to stitch with fancy floss. <laughs> I mean, this variegated thread, it's just really pretty and really fun. I don't know, do you guys ever, have you guys ever splurged on some expensive, fancy material for crafting? It just, it just is exciting to work with. I remember my mom and I got a, a knitting kit. We each got one and ugh, this yarn was so expensive, but it was so beautiful and it just made you happy every single time you touched it to stitch and you knew you were making something super special. I don't know. You definitely don't need expensive uh, materials, but every once in a while it's pretty fun. All right, so now this is kind of funny. It looks like it's doing an underneath arc, and then up here it switches to an above, an above arc. So I think we will, we will treat it as such. Oh, you're still these blocks. Okay, so I know I, I'm gonna read all your guys' comments again when we're done here, so I can look at some of the technical things that you're saying. Um, so we can, so we can try and improve on those for, for tomorrow's and you know, future videos. Uh, for sure, one we will get the sound a little louder. We're still working on that. We're working through some microphones, but I'm hoping to have really nice, lovely, juicy sound for you as best as what <laughs> my voice will sound like. I suppose you're still stuck with me here, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah. We'll work on um, we'll work on all of it. So thanks again for bearing with me. I know I'm kind of talking, yammering on a lot about it tonight, but this is our first time giving it a go here with the new new equipment. All right, I'm gonna jump up to the top here again. Let's do this little baby one first. 
So these these all look like upper curves here. Oh, so I, I have not stitched with um, silk before on on this. What did we use the silk for? Oh, needle turn applique. So I did get some silk. Oh, I think I, oh wait, no. Uh, I did get some silk to try, but for a needle turn applique, and that was kind of fun, that worked. But I haven't stitched with like silk floss or something before, that'd be pretty fun. You know what, I think I'm gonna get, well, nah, let's just do that and then I'll jump back down here. So now the arc's this way, so my thread is on top again. An upward arc, so an upward thread. Oh, sure. Um, Charlotte, yeah. Why don't you let me know on that? So if it's very different, uh, that's what I'd like to know too. So let me know what platform you're on. Actually, I'd love to know that anyway. Are you watching on, uh, are you watching on a, a phone or a, are you on a Android or an iPhone? Are you watching on an, a, a, like an iPad device or some other device? Are you on your computer? Uh, what kind of computer? I'd love to hear all that stuff. That's all, that is all good information um, as we work through this. iPhone for you, Debbie. Um, all right, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna turn it just so I'm still going left to right because that's, that's just easiest for me. You usually watch on the iPad, Gretchen. Yeah, and then, you know, let me know. I think it is probably pretty quiet for everyone, so we'll we'll work on that. Ooh, Kindle. Oh, I didn't know you could watch this stuff on Kindles. Oh, that's cool. Justin, my brother, he's on an iPad. All right. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we finished that all tonight. I mean, we do have these little bits. We'll do that, but dang, we got almost all the um, stem stitch done. Pretty happy about that. Geez, we might be done with this block by the end of the week. That would be something because this block, this was an intense block. This block has lasted us ages and ages and ages. So um, <laughs> it would be nice to be done, start a new block next month, wouldn't it? All right, so I'm gonna push through. Let's get all of this stem stitch done tonight. Um, so that just means a couple little threads down here and it's not all of them it's I'm looking at the instructions it's the first two then the fourth and then these middle two okay we can do that watching an android iphone or ipad depending where you are all right oh with the thread that comes off the spool robin i'll have to look at that little baby thread. There we go. Just trying to isolate one. Okay, that's one. We're going to work on our cameras and stuff too. I know this is being weird for focusing and we'll figure it out. Thanks again for hanging out with me here and while we play with technology. All right, last little stems down here and done, done. Okay, and I think I'm gonna weave into these stitches and then just jump down here because I think that's just gonna, I don't wanna start with a, a way knot again. I wanna start by weaving, weaving the stitches. We'll weave in these ones. We haven't woven in those yet. That's one, two. I always uh, start so that when I do three, I end up where I want to start stitching. So I start away, then I do one, two, and then on the third one, I will be back down to where I want to start, which is down here. 
we're gonna actually jump down to here. This might be a little difficult because we are stitching through uh, quite a lot of seams here. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay, uh, let's see, we got, well, actually, I like stitching from left to right for these. So we have an above arc for this first one. So I'm gonna put my threads above. Oh, that makes sense, Gail, um, working on the a larger screen. I kind of like that too. I like on, I like watching YouTubes on my big computer monitor because I can make the screen really big if I want to. Whew, this is definitely more difficult stitching through all these all these seams. All right, last stitch there. All right, and then the next one is the second one. And I'm gonna, I, for stem stitch, I like going left to right. Some people might be able to go in any direction, but I'm gonna just keep going left to right. So I rotated, now I have a downward arc, so I'm gonna have my thread down. Whew, get in there. Man, if I'm stitching through this much fabric for a lot of this, uh, I could see a thimble, um, just like right here. I could use a thimble right there for all this thread, but all the, all the um, fabric, but we don't, there's hardly any, any, I mean, we're gonna be done soon, so I don't need, need to do that. Okay, uh, next up, we skip that one, and then we come up at this next one. Now we're kind of above again. Oh, I hope I can get all of this with just this one thread. Oh wait, yeah, I'm doing the right one. I thought maybe I didn't skip one. How many more? Two more, two little babies. And then we're, then we're done. Uh, these two. So we'll skip that one again, rotate. Yeah, this one's pretty straight. I think it's kind of going this way, so we're gonna go underneath. Ooh, get through. Can't see my lines very well, but I know they're there. Oh, you go, Marie, you go left to right as well. It just feels right. I think because I'm just used to pulling in this direction and, well, actually the other way might work well too. I don't know. I should maybe practice the other direction too, just to be good in both directions. That's something. All right, here is another example of, I'm kind of, I need to start here and go to here, but I need to come out of that same hole and you can't do that with stem stitch. So what I'm gonna do is that trick again. I'm gonna grab the last stitch from behind. So we're kind of wrapping around that stitch like this. And now I can come back through the same hole because uh, that stitch is attached to the stitch before now. So before, if I would have come out this same hole, I would have um, I would have pulled out that stitch, right? All right, I gotta go this way again now. So underneath, I'm gonna kind of overlap that stitch a little. But yeah, so that was a fun trick when I learned that. I think that was a YouTube discovery. I don't remember where I learned that from. All right, last little stitch here. Then we'll weave, oop, we'll weave in the ends. Oh, it's so sweet. Oh, I'm excited to do the green tomorrow. So tomorrow, so today was all about the stem stitch Tomorrow we will do the chain stitch for um, most of the time. All right, there's our third. Oh, kind of stuck, there we go. All right, 
right, so there we are. Let's check it out here. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, I think this is looking great. So here is a little bit closer. Uh, I think uh, we're getting so much texture with the addition of the embroidery. I think that's uh, gonna be just really sweet. It looks just really kind of lovely. So awesome, uh, tomorrow we're gonna play with this green. That will be all these stems that connect to the paws. So there's really only these three and then these couple little stems down here. The, uh, the bow is all chain stitch, but we're gonna do the bow last, I think. Well, maybe we'll do, well, maybe we'll start the bow tomorrow too. And then later in the week, we have lazy daisy stitches. That's all the flowers. And uh, inside the flowers, we have little dots. And I guess we didn't really pick a color for that. I mean, we could, maybe, maybe the um, flowers are these kind of variations of pink. And then maybe the purple is the inside dots for all of them. That would be kind of fun. Then there's some kind of rule or consistency. Oh, wait, I forgot about this color too. Oh, wait, no, this was going to be the bow. Oh, now I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, this could be, maybe, maybe the bow is purple. Maybe that's the bow. And these are, these could be the flowers with a little red center. That would be kind of pretty. Or we could do red and pink flowers and this tan could be the center. I think that's my favorite way so far. <laughs> Decisions. But <laughs> all right, you guys, uh, I'm going to call it there for the night. Uh, Zeb says goodbye. <laughs> and uh, uh, tomorrow we will have another day of playing around with um, playing around with all of these embroideries and my new technology and I'm gonna just wave bye to you here because <laughs> the front camera isn't working again so have a fabulous evening everyone see you tomorrow and uh, I will get this up on YouTube right away so have a good evening good night <laughs>